Welcome to the Scalpel of Truth, the podcast providing cutting insight on how to rise to the top in the medical aesthetics industry with your host, Lisa Krauss, aka the bitch and beautician. That's Lisa with an E, which stands for explicit, because in this surgical suite, she won't sugarcoat the truth. And yes, there will be some seriously salty language, not suitable for sensitive souls, children, nor pets. As a business consultant, Lisa shares the knowledge and lessons she's gleaned over 30 years in the industry, time spent working directly with patients, managers, and med spa owners alike. Her practice growth strategies are sharp, her stories and wits sharper, and her panache for bringing the spice, the sharpest. So buckle up, bichachos. Lisa's about to slice and dice another episode of The Scalpel of Truth. All right, bachachos, today's episode is called Idle to Ideal, Transforming Quiet Hours into Power Hours. Guys, we are going to discuss what the med spa team, whether you're an employee or a contractor, should be doing in their non-production hours or downtime. Here's the legal part I need to read. This podcast is presented solely for educational entertainment purposes. Guys, I'm just your beauty business bitch. I'm not a licensed therapist or an HR representative, nor am I a lawyer. This platform's used to share my experiences with what's made me a successful service provider, a manager, and a business consultant for those who I coach. Got it? Beautiful. Service providers in med spas can engage in a variety of different activities to enhance professional skills and contribute to smooth operations in your clinic. And so we all want to improve our patient satisfaction. So we're going to go through a list of suggested activities that is going to do just that. Because I get a lot of feedback from clients that I've done consulting for over the years. And I've witnessed it firsthand what some people tend to do in downtime when they're not on production hours or their patient has canceled or they come in and a patient wasn't booked and they do have some idle downtime. A lot of times people will chit chat. They'll clock out and leave and go to the mall. They'll go run errands. Oh, I'm not booked with the patient. I'm going to go. And it doesn't leave any opportunity for walk-ins for availability. It's just all around poor. It's the shits when you're trying to run a business and you've got people that are not productive in non-production hours. Let's go through this with some suggested activities to do when you don't have a patient or you've got downtime in the schedule. So number one thing would be client follow-ups. You want to do patient callbacks to make sure that they're okay with their post-treatment progress and you want to address any concerns they might have and do some relationship development. So you definitely want to be doing follow-up calls. Maybe you do calls, you pull from your database. I mean, you can do this with SMS text messaging and email blasts, but what better than a personal touch, which is super high-end, if we're talking high-end patient experience and luxury sales, if you're doing a touch point with these patients in your downtime. The next thing would be inventory management. Is there anything that you need to restock for treatment supplies? You want to make sure that expiry dates are in order. And you want to make sure that you're merchandising attractively so you can change up your merchandising strategies. You can look for different ways in your inventory management. Like, do we need more testers? What is the condition of our testers? Is there anything that the staff needs? Do we need to place a staff order? Do we need to check stock? Like, are we low on some of our top sellers? So inventory management is something that people can be doing in downtime. Another one is staff training. So you want to participate in training sessions, whether they're online or any way. Maybe the person that doesn't have a patient or a patient canceled or didn't show up or whatever can go and shadow somebody else. Maybe you can assist one of the injectors. Maybe you could go turn over treatment rooms. Any sort of staff training, though, if possible, jumping on one of your vendor platforms, because a lot of them have academies where you can get extra education. So doing some staff training in downtime. Another one would be treatment room organization. So making sure that everything in the treatment room is organized and stocked and sanitized, and it becomes a very inviting environment. This is a time where you can catch up on laundry. 
You can put product orders away that might have just come in. You can create orders. Again, that relates to some of our inventory management. And then another thing that you could possibly do is record keeping. So update your patient records. So with treatment details, progress notes, any adverse reaction that they had, look into that a little bit deeper, which you should be doing anyway. And then next steps, review their treatment protocols and what is their next step for results optimization. If you see some patients coming in and you look ahead in the schedule, how can you be proactive versus reactive, right? So let's look at equipment maintenance. Maybe you perform routine checks on your lasers and maintain that laser equipment to ensure everything's in working order. Maybe you check the water levels. Maybe you checked your treatment extender windows. Check the glasses. Are they clean? Are they in working condition? Then professional development. So reading any sort of industry publications or any webinars that you could possibly do. Again, this ties into some of that staff training. If it's not on site, they could engage in some of the online forums or catch an Instagram live or things like that to keep up with the latest trends and best practices. Another one is scheduling and appointments. Review and optimize the schedule. Look to make sure that it is a, an efficient use of time and resources. Maybe you've got, you know, somebody booked at 10, somebody booked at two, and somebody booked at four. Tighten up that schedule. Look for ways to be productive and efficient in that downtime. Another one could be calling a staff meeting, a team meeting where you can do a little get together to discuss operational improvements or patient feedback or any other strategic issues that if you dealt with them, you could optimize the business functions, which directly relate to and affect profitability, right? So you could get together, do some brainstorming, look at your feedback analysis, right? Review patient feedback, your online reviews. What a great opportunity to look at online reviews or rate MD or anything that is a way to identify areas for improvement. Maybe look at potential services, review your service menu. If there's no one else around, you don't have a patient to treat. If there's two service providers, get social media content, do a treatment on each other. Another one would be financial documentation. Maybe you could assist with the front desk. You could assist with billing or maybe invoicing, checking patients out, some administrative ta tasks that get backed up from time to time. Another thing you could do is review and update safety protocols, ensure compliance with local health regulations. That's another thing that you could do in your downtime. There's many things. You could take business cards or networking cards or promotional folders and go out and do some business to business marketing. Introduce yourself. How are we going to work together? Is there something that I can bring awareness for my clientele to your clientele? Many different things that you can do in the downtime of not having a patient or non-production hours. These activities all help to maintain the quality of service and operational efficiencies, ensuring that your clinic is providing a high standard of care to your patients. So these are some of the things, and I know that this is a little bit of a shorter episode, but these are all things that could be done during clinic downtime. This is one of the things that sometimes irks me with contractors is because they're not getting an hourly wage or an hourly rate, they bugger off and go do their own stuff. The best contractors out there are ones that are business builders. And we've talked about it in a previous episode business builders or revenue generators versus paycheck collectors. The ones that are doing dick all in the downtime, that's another great way and, and a way to indicate and, and identify if somebody is a paycheck collector. You shouldn't have to ask these things. These things should be posted. They should be in your clinic manual. If there's downtime, this is shit that needs to be done. It could even be posted in your staff room. Hey, team, if you don't have anything to do, a patient cancels, whatever, please be a team player. Check in with these top 13, 15, 20, whatever it is, things that you could be doing in your downtime. So teams out there listening, this is a really big one for clinic efficiency and being proactive versus reactive, right? A good old saying, you got time to lean, you got time to clean. A lot of times, if you have drama, 
in your clinic, it's because those folks have time to stir the pot. They're giving everybody a lick of the spoon. It's always my analogy. If there's time in the schedule, in non-production hours, you best find something to do. So any service provider out there listening, you will reflect as an A-game player if you are doing these things suggested for activities in your downtime. All right, guys, I want you to stay focused, stay sharp, stay fabulous. This is truly a key differentiator in your practice when you've got team members that are excelling in non-production hours. So let's go. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. I invite you to share this podcast with your team and colleagues. To get in touch with me, you can visit my website, vanityempireconsulting.com. And to find me on Instagram and to find the show on Instagram, it's at the bitch and beautician and at scalpel of truth podcast, wishing you so much love and success. And until next time, I want you to stay sharp, stay focused and stay fabulous. Uh, Don't want to wait, just see things stay the way they are.